What's up guys, it's back. I'm back here and it's another video and today we're going to be playing as Russia and uh, reforming the Soviet Union. Of course, the long probably have been waiting to do this for a while. And of course, firstly, we attack Estonia. I mean, of course, the Baltic states are the obvious first choice. They do stop my northern advance, but I'm able to well, recruit troops since I did play pretty conservatively and get all the money I needed. And so that was a relatively quick conquest. Next thing, of course, Latvia. Uh, I started with the north, and you know, I I just moved my way down south. That's the that's the way I decided to go. And yeah, I just quickly recru recruited people. Anyways, you know, see the thing about the Baltic states and like fighting them as Russia is they're relatively easy to conquer. There's not much of like struggle, you could say. They do push Latvia here does push back, but I do I am able to recruit new troops. And of course, eventually overwhelm them with numbers. I mean, in the end, though, overwhelming with numbers is exactly. I mean, this is what you do in this game. There isn't much tactical stuff, to be honest. Um, it's mainly a numbers game, so yeah. Of course, there is with um, like say for example fortifications. You can like take castles. There you got to be careful because there's a defender's advantage. But other than that, not really. And so next, I prepare to invade Lithuania from all sides. So. Since Russia has Kaliningrad, I'm able to invade from two fronts. And as we all know, the AI in this game sucks at two-front wars. And uh, I quickly overrun Lithuania in like two turns. So just like that, I finish all the Baltic states. And, you know, I decide to continue up the momentum and take over Belarus. Because, uh, you know, might as well. And might as well, you know, put the leftover troops to use. And so I quickly recruit troops around and I invade Belarus from all sides. So in this case, it's something like three sides, like the north, sort of west, and uh, east as well. So I guess, yeah. Belarus, they do uh, repel me in one of the attacks, but and which forces me to actually move back some troops. And they repel it again, but once again, I just attack them. And they tried to do that tactic where they spread out, but... I was able to defeat them in the end. Again, overwhelming numbers with the day. I think I think the yeah Russians proved that in World War Two, anyways. So quickly assimilate Belarus. Denmark declares war on me for some reason. So to get them off my back, I just get Germany to invade them. Um, they still don't peace out, but I've just you know I know they won't be a problem now. So next up, I decide to invade the Caucasus. And so all I have, you know, over here, I just had to take out the small states of, you know, Georgia, um, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. And uh, this invasion of Georgia goes relatively well. They do push, they do advance on my territory as well. They um, take one province, but I'm able to retake it. And they do counterattack as well. So this time it isn't as clean cut, but I start raising an entire army just to make sure that they don't do anything. And then at this point, yeah they run out they run out of people and so george that completes the conquest of georgia uh i quickly assimilate all of the provinces because this is always a must in this game and then i quickly move all my troops to invade prepare for the invasion of armenia which is i mean easy invasion i i could have just i i did it with just the leftover troops um because you know I had troops left over. And next up, we had to invade Azerbaijan. We invaded Azerbaijan. And of course, this, similar to the other ones, relative, very easy conquest. I could attack them from two sides now, north and west. And so this conquest went relatively quickly. They did push back, but it only amounted to like a few hundred people that managed to even like break out. And the, it was over. And so we finished conquering the entire Caucasus just like that. It was all over. Next up, I decided to invade Ukraine and prepare for it. So I started raising an army. Now, of course, this is totally not... As of, as of recording, this is like... Uh, this is February 11th. I'm recording this. So totally not suspicious, but... Anyways, America declared war on me, and so I just got Mexico and Canada to declare war on them. 
So that two front war usually messes with the United States in this game most of the time. So it got them off my back. Norway, on the other hand, pieced out almost immediately, so I didn't need to worry. And just like that, I declare war on Ukraine and advance from like three different sides. And uh, in this case, I'm able to advance on all provinces and well, overwhelmingly win. Yeah, totally not, uh, totally not concerning in terms of the current situation. But you know what? Let's let's just hope that never happens. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hope that never happens. Anyways, so the invasion of Ukraine does go pretty well, but however, towards in, in my northern fucking hell. Okay, ignore that. But back to what I was. <laughs> sorry about that. Anyways, back to what I was saying. So towards the northern push, they did manage to repel me because mainly because they really concentrated their forces over there. But down south, it was relatively simple because they 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 I really didn't defend, and I was able to take Crimea and this most of the southern regions of Ukraine with relative ease. And soon I I so that's why I started to like reinforce the north. And over here, at this point, I was starting to run out of money a little bit, but. Again, it wasn't too much of a problem considering Ukraine was mostly deplete. Most of their forces were very depleted at this point in the war. And so I was able to take more and more territory. Uh, they did try to, they did break past my front line, but I was able to send that troop back and then retake the land. And I put troops around it to safeguard that place as well. And just like that, I was able to take over all of Ukraine. And this one, I just, yeah, I flat out annexed it all. So, yeah, I got all of the, so essentially I took nearly all the territory I needed for uh, Western Europe. I think, yeah, this counts as Western, right? Eastern, Eastern European territory, all the ones I needed. The only thing left was Moldova. And so this took me a while considering Ukraine has a lot of provinces. And honestly, this is one of the implausibilities of the game. Like you'd think, you know, there'd be insurgencies and stuff like that. That would, I'm pretty sure that would be the much more realistic uh, situation in, the, in terms of conquering another nation. But like, yeah, it's not always there. So I, I gather up the leftover troops and I prepare for the invasion of Moldova because why not carry the momentum? Uh, of course, as you can see, I messed with my my little scrolling list. Anyways, I declare war on Moldova, and of course, this is a relatively easy conquest. They pile up most of their troops in Transnistria, Transnistria, and um, I'm able to destroy them in one battle itself. And so, just like that, I finished all the European territories I needed, and so I immediately prepare for a invasion of Kazakhstan. I mean, I had the money anyways, so. And each province, I make sure, and you know, the thing is, right, whenever I invade a country and at this scale, like a massive border, I ensure that like each province has at least, at least 1,700 or at least 2,000, 2,000 people. That's probably your best bet if you ever like play this game, right? It's probably the best bet to go. I mean, of course, you can see some of them have like 1,400, 300. That's just fine. But in on average, it needs to have at least like 2,000 per province while invading. That's the best thing to do. And like Kazakhstan, it starts with Kazakhstan attacking me because they get, I guess they get the turn first. But um, yeah, as you can see, my advance isn't exactly stopped. And so I unimpeded really just advance into Kazakhstan. Uh, I'm able to take the capital relatively quickly as well. And so I start, you know, making, and, and some of my troops, they do fall behind, but I really don't let that slow me down because in all, in all honesty, right, the more time you give uh, for, to the AI, like to, you know, while you're invading, right, the slower you invade, the more time you give the AI to like make a counterattack or something, you know, because this game is turn-based. And so the more turns you go, the more money the AI will have. And so hence the more it'll, they'll be able to like go, uh, wait, fight back in this case. So always invade the quickest. That's my best strategy. And so Kazakhstan, they try to do that thing where they spread out again, but I try to stop them. They spread out even more. And then I have to spread out as well <laughs> to try, somehow try combat it. And I, I try to cover every single province when that happens. I even conscripted people. And then finally I was able to c c contain it and then 
just like that, Kazakhstan is gone. And by this point, I'm like the number one in the world. But you know, we're not done. We're still not done. We still have to take over all of the stands, except Afghanistan. But all the stands, actually, no, except Afghanistan and Pakistan. That's it. Afghanistan and Pakistan. Yeah, those, those are the only ones that didn't come under Soviet influence. And like, I just want to say one thing though. Like, what are the borders here? Like, who drew these? Like, I mean, honestly, you can tell that it was drawn by like Soviet map, like European maps, bro. Like, this, like it's it's curving at the same time as straight lines. What? Anyways, <clears throat> I prepare. So I, I start gathering my troops and prepare for the invasion of, of Uzbekistan. Uh, I start. Rec I recruit all the way up there mainly because. Uh, Kazakhstan. I was I was still assimilating Kazakhstan, so uh, it doesn't work. So it takes me a while, but I declare war on Uzbekistan. And this war, I think. Well, <laughs> I forgot to bring some troops to the front line because uh, I was keeping them on the border of Kyrgyzstan. But I just realized that it doesn't make sense. They do push back with like four thousand people. However, I'm able to stop that, but they spread out again. Uh, yeah, I really hate when the AI does this. And so even even though Kazakhstan isn't fully assimilated, I still try to recruit from there just as a preemptive measure. And it does actually help because it would have uh, made them spread even more if I didn't. And so from here, I do try to attack and then I'm able to contain them and just like that, <laughs> again, invade Uzbekistan. That's the thing about the AI though, when they invade, right, when they're counterattacking, most of the time they'll just try to spread out as far as they can, which I wouldn't recommend like you doing, like it's not a good idea in the long run because when you spread yourself out way too thin, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit at all. It's not good. Anyways, I invade Tajikistan right after that with just the same momentum really. And of course, Tajik Tajikistan falls much quicker And so all of a sudden, a coalition of like Afghanistan, Bosnia, and Somalia declare war on me, but I make peace with them. And I'm at the power, I'm at like the point, which since I'm the number one, or like way higher than them, uh, Afghanistan immediately makes peace with me. So yeah, we don't, see, see thing is, we don't want a repeat of the um, Soviet-Afghan war. You know, I think, I think they, I think they don't want that too. Anyways. We plan for the invasion of Kyrgyzstan, and I do realize that I now that I look at it, I left a part of the, <laughs> I left a part of the province open, which I quickly try to refill, um, with like for those five hundred troops. It does work. They are not able to take. They aren't able to take it, and just like that, in like one turn, I'm able to take uh, Kyrgyzstan, and like I realize <laughs> I missed Turkmenistan and Iran, so I build up some troops in Iran, like I move it to the border. And then I uh, prepare to invade uh, Turkmenistan. Of course, at this point, uh, the old Kazakh territory has been properly assimilated, so I'm able to recruit troops from there. And um, just like that, really, I cover every province and yeah, invade Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan relatively, was relatively easy. They did not put much resistance at all. And so they fell. They fell in like three turns. And just like that, I conquered Turkmenistan. And now all I had was Iran. And I don't, I don't know, you know, I wasn't in the mood to conquer all of Iran. Anyways, Nigeria randomly declares war on me as well. Uh, and I try to make, I make peace with them, and of course they agree. <laughs> Again, when you're number one in the world, the AI will usually agree to peace. And so since I had enough money and I was practically rolling at this point, I, uh, and also since I assimilated these Caucasian places, trust me, the Caucasus is a very good place to recruit, uh, mainly because there's a very high population. And so what I do is I get the Iran-Iraq war off going, going off again. <laughs> and um, I basically exploit that conflict and then take the territory. We have brought back the glorious Soviet Union. <clears throat> Workers of the world, you uh, we must unite what we have united. And now, 
we will seize the means of production. You have nothing to lose but your chains. And soon, the revolution will, will be spread to the rest of the world. Till next time.